And here to tell us more about the possible dangers of BPA is hormone expert Josef Kurler. He pursues research at the Charité Hospital here in Berlin. Mr. Kurler, how dangerous do you think BPA really is? BPA is one of the top compounds currently of concern for endocrinologists and also for developmental biologists because it's such a high production. It's available in our environment, in our products of daily use and also of medical and nutritive agents. And we have a lot of data suggesting that it might have a lot of adverse effects in influencing hormone metabolism and in influencing development. You know, you say we have a lot of data. There have been a lot of studies done on BPA and yet the results of these studies differ. There are some studies that say it's not dangerous, some that yeah. indicate it could be dangerous. Why, can, why can't we get a unified position on BPA? The compound is new to be of concern because we discovered the problem very recently by its mode of action with the steroid hormone system in the cells. And this is, for example, one of the reasons why the American government in the stimulus grant just recently donated 30 million of dollars for BPA, bisphenol A research. The past experiments which have been done, and they have to be do done in uh, animal experiments or from human data, show that there are different mechanisms of actions and the administration of compound via the food, via gavage, injection, for example, mm -hmm. give different results. So we have to analyze what is really the reality scenario. What does this mean for the consumer, for example. I mean, we use plastic spoons, plastic knives, we eat yogurt in plastic containers. Um, is there a level where you could say, okay, Brent, you're, you're using too much plastic, it's becoming dangerous now. Is there a level? There is currently a limit at an intake of 50 micrograms per day per kilogram, and uh, there is a huge safety margin. But what still. does it mean in practical terms? How do I know that I've reached that level? Uh, for example, in the daily consumption from uh, a plastic bottle containing water or drinks, you take probably one tenth or one uh, fiftieth of that amount already, just from the water. But there are so many sources. There are sources also, for example, from the dentist's practice, mm -hmm. because this is used in epoxy resins, which are used in dentistry. So it's everywhere, and it's increasing the amount, so we are very concerned now knowing some effects. Mr. Krill, you say that it is everywhere, but does it that make it very unlikely or very difficult that the chemicals industry will ever agree to get rid of this product completely? No, I think uh, we know from medicine that some of the products in medicine containing phthalates and other compounds of concern could already be uh, removed from the product. So there are products on the market already which do not contain phthalates anymore. So I think in short term, we can either use more glassware again or replace polycarbonate, at least in the close human use. Okay. Mr. Kerler, thank you very much for talking with us. Thank you.